What up, everybody? Welcome back to the N Nerd Generation. Uh, if you missed us last week, we had some technical difficulties, but we're going to cover some of the things that we uh, didn't get to uh, show you guys in this episode. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. We're going to be doing things a little bit different this time. Um, we're going to keep these episodes short and give you more content. Hopefully, you guys are enjoy will enjoy that format brian how you doing uh, a little under the weather but it was a big week in my household because my seven-year-old watched her first mcu films oh nice which one of them started her off with first avenger he was very excited moved her over to thor the original thor she liked that a lot and now we're in the process of watching the first Avengers movie. So we're kind of skipping around a little bit, but I'm trying to give her enough pieces to follow along. And then we're yeah, going to yeah. take a little bit of break, but she's really enjoying it. She's really digging the characters and getting into it and doesn't find it too scary finally. And so, yeah, it's got been it, all good. It, it's been very it. exciting. Got it. Got it. Um, so you're not going to show Incredible Hulk yet. She's too young for that. Uh, there's a couple, like, there's definitely some that are like, it's a little rougher. Like I've, I've yeah. warned her and like, especially, and then also on the DC side, like some of that stuff's a little too oh, dark, yeah, I think yeah, for, yeah, for her, yeah, but, yeah. but I kind of wanted to give her that, the taste of like Avengers one, right? You got Loki, you got the Tesseract. So you kind of just need Cap and Thor to get you there. You don't really need mm -hmm. even Iron Man, honestly. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, or Incredible Hulk. So yeah, but it was good. She likes it. It was awesome. Cool, cool. Um, Let's talk about Doc Strange. Mm -hmm. The second film in this, uh, uh, not that franchise, but the second film, uh, the sequel for the first Doctor Strange. Um, Brian, we've been getting some newer clips. Apparently 20 minutes of the movie was shown at CinemaCon, correct? Correct. Um, we're seeing some images that reminds us of the animated series of Professor X. And we've been saying it all along. <clears throat> this movie provides the place to do a lot. Not only with Easter eggs, but introductions to other things in the MCU. And like I've said before, the multiverse is not going to wrap up after this movie. This is going to continue in order for them to be able to tell some of the stories that they want to tell. So that's very exciting. To know that the X-Men are coming is very exciting, Brian. Even though I don't think we're going to get an X-Men film in the next two to three years, but we're certainly going to get indication of their presence. Um, we've said, Brian, this movie will probably make a billion because the excitement is there. The hype is there. Um, and it's a Marvel movie and this movie, the possibilities are endless. You can literally say that the possibilities are endless here. We don't know what we're going to see. We have indication of what we might see. Uh, we saw some extra clips of um captain britain right no captain carter captain carter captain carter yes correct so we're gonna be seeing things here and there brian that are, are, are certainly got me hyped what are your thoughts on on the doctor strange 2 film what we're gonna be seeing the excitement surrounding it um and your final predictions on the sort of box you think it'll reach so hot take, I'm nervous, and my gut is this film is going to disappoint a little bit. I say it's going to be bad, but I feel like the combination of the cameo hype fest and all of the things that this multiversal potential has created I think makes the bar almost impossible for this movie to 
massively exceed your expectation. For lack of a better phrase, there's a little bit of the Mephisto and WandaVision feeling of like, it was like that thing built to where like when Mephisto didn't show and there was no Reed Richards, it was like people felt like it was a letdown, even though the show was pretty good. I don't know how I feel about this movie a little bit now. I'm nervous. Like I'm actually nervous. I'm, I'm like I'm hyped, but I'm nervous. Let me ask you this: Do you feel similar feelings of that nervousness that you feel now towards No Way Home? Is it similar? The con is the concern the same? In a weird, so in a weird way, I feel more nervous. Um, and the only reason I say that is because I felt like with No Way Home, we, we both raised a number of concerns, but we also knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Spider-Men were in there and Charlie Cox were in there. We knew they were in there. Mm. And I think we knew they were in there more than just one scene. So there was a little bit of an anchor of... I don't know if they're going to pull this off, but my expectations were a little bit lower, to be quite honest. And the certainty was a little bit higher. Okay. I also didn't feel like, I don't know, weirdly, I didn't feel like the stakes were quite as high. I know it was the culmination of the trilogy, but I feel like this movie, because it is the launch point for theatrical multiversal storytelling for Marvel, a big one it's one of the bigger films they put out there in terms of they need to they need to stick the landing i think for people to really buy into some of the things they're hoping to do down the road and i don't know i i'm, I'm just nervous and like the, the degree of reshoots the director change like that stuff doesn't mean a film is going to be bad but it feels like a lot has changed between point a and point b I just don't know if this thing is going to quite get to the heights that I feel like people's expectations have gotten to. Um, so you, you, you mentioned CinemaCon. So what we heard was 20 minutes. They basically showed the first, the opening of the film uninterrupted, which by okay. all accounts is an intro to America Chavez's character alongside Stephen Strange. I don't want to spoil more than that. You can read it if you want, but that's kind mm -hmm. of what's... And then they ended it with a kind of new mini trailer of highlights and quick cuts, which showed a little bit more of some of the things that have been teased. Uh, that also coincided with something I know you want to talk about, which is in the TV ad campaign. They flat out just gave away Illuminati and showed straight up certain things of characters who presumably are in the Illuminati or in the multiverse. Um, so they're definitely revealing quite a bit ahead of this film coming out. I haven't heard anything that said the people's reactions to the 15 or 20 minutes was bad, but like I said, I, I don't know, like if this thing is 85% fresh and the critic scores are like three and a half to four stars, like, is that good enough? for you, for what this thing needs to be? It is quite peculiar that after a movie that has been that's beyond the shadow of a doubt, this movie has a lot of hype behind it. And they've done a good job of keeping things on ice, right? Not, not revealing too much. And then they show 20 minutes of the film and nothing to sort of, I guess there's an embargo maybe. Uh, but yeah, there is, there is. Yeah, there is an embargo on reactions and reviews. They're keeping it real tight to the release date. I think, in, but see, normally that's a warning sign, right? You see, if you keep the embargo real tight, it's a warning sign. In this case, it may not be because of the spoilers and the cameos. They may that may be the motivation for not wanting that to slip out until right before. But yeah, you're not going to get anything until the week of the movie. Yeah.
it can go either way. One way is that they're 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 really setting us up for um, something magnificent in playing it so close and actually us going in there were concerns similar to how we went in with No Way Home and then be pleasantly surprised. Or the movie's bad. Right? Those are the only, I guess, I, with Marvel movies, I don't want a so-so movie. I want a good movie. Especially for this one. Yeah, especially for things like this. It's, it's, uh, I have high hopes. Um, the director switch, we weren't too far into the film for it to be, I don't think that much of a problem. And the reshoots seems to be something that they do often. And that is to, you know, be sure that they're in line with what, with other stuff that they're doing. So I think that's just a Marvel way at this point. So there's certainly concerns, but I, I, I'm, I feel some sort of confidence that um, they're, they're going to do it again. Okay. I think I also feel compelled to point out, and it's sort of, I haven't seen this written and then maybe it's sacrilegious. Which Sam Raimi did Marvel get? Did they get the Sam Raimi that directed Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2 and Evil Dead, you know, 20 some odd years ago? Or did they get the Sam Raimi that did Spider-Man 3 and Oz the Great and Powerful more recently? Because I, I, you know, to call a spade a spade, he's had some incredible highs but he's also had some disappointments more recently. Let me so ask I hope this. He still has the fastball because yeah, he's going to yeah, need yeah. the fastball for this movie. Yeah. Um, we need, uh, what's the dude's name from Major League? Ricky Vaughn. We need the original Ricky Vaughn. The <laughs> no doubt. Wild no thing. doubt. No doubt. Um, it was the. Oz films under Sony or with others or with another uh, studio? Others, other studio. I, I want to say, was it Disney or Universal? I can't remember who, who he did it with, but that was a big budget flop in 2013 or 14. But this is his highest profile project, you know, with that kind of budget probably since that time. You think it was something that he wanted to do or they were just giving him a good amount of money to do it? Oz? Yeah. I don't know the backstory to that movie. So because why would that, why would you want I mean listen? Like, nah. I wouldn't want to do Oz. Like, why would you find passion to do Oz? Like, nah. Well, for some people, whatever, but no. Um and Spider-Man 3. He lost a little bit of control. I can't put it all on him. It wasn't like, do your thing, Sam. It's like, what we doing? I want to be at the table when you're making these decisions. So let's see, man. Let's see. Um, it's going to be very, very interesting. Oh, box office, I think is a lock. I mean, so I feel like that's all of this discussion. And I have a couple of questions for you, but. You know, ticket sales have been exceeding that of the Batman. It's early in the summer. You know, people have just gotten through a month of disappointment. Morbius, Fantastic Beast. Um, the Bad Guys, pretty good for kids. Good animated film. Recommend you go see it if you like that sort of thing. But, um, you know, even like Michael Bay's Ambulance, nobody went to see it. Slowly was good. Nobody went to see it. People are waiting. They're waiting to go to this movie. Um, so you're going to get 150 to 200 million dollars. I think no problem. Domestic box office opening weekend. Um, if the reviews are good, you probably push that 200 dollar, 200 million figure. Um, if you start to get the hype train on, oh, you got to see it because mm -hmm. Tom Cruise is Iron Man. Like that sort of stuff mm -hmm. starts to leak out on Thursday and Friday you might see bigger numbers on Saturday and Sunday. That's kind of how this works, right? Whether, yeah. whether or not the movie's good, that opening weekend is kind of is sealed. 
Yeah. Um, I still think you're, I'm with you. I still think it's got billion dollar potential, you know, even with China being TBD, I still think it can get there. Um, but you know, if it's, if it's just okay, then that's going to be a little more in question. So that's the one caveat, right? It's like, if it's, if it's just all right, then, then you might have a much bigger opening weekend and maybe the billion, it gets a little tougher. Maybe you're more 850, 900, something like that. Um, I wanted to ask you this dropping the Illuminati in a TV spot and straight out saying it, do you have a problem with them doing that? Not really. Okay. I think there's more to this film than just the Illuminati. I think the Illuminati is an opportunity to introduce some characters there. Mm -hmm. If you want to go ahead and say who you think the Illuminati will be, go right ahead. But for me, I think we're going to probably see a version of Reed Richards, perhaps a T'Challa, perhaps a Black Bolt. You know, the, the opportunity is there to introduce these characters, even though if they, even if they don't do anything with them for the next few years, but to show them, I think is a huge moment to sort of gauge where in what direction they go what story they tell how geeked out were you to see professor x got his yellow wheelchair back what it reminded me of brian and you still haven't done it possibly seeing the last episode of x-men the animated series i haven't gone back to the last episode no but you i know gotta that's gotta watch it okay. watch it because we don't know which Professor X, if it's, because it, it seems to be based on what they showed. It's just like classic, you know. But the way that show ended up, off, who knows if this is the same Charles Xavier and there's this whole middle piece that we'll probably see in the animated series of how they, they get to him. But um, that's what I thought of thought about immediately um these guys the ca the comic book accuracy that they're trying to go for for this is, is really exciting to see to see if they can pull it off um i think that's one of the most more intriguing things for me um which and they did they've done a successful job with a lot of the characters um so what what were your thoughts when you saw when you when you yeah, saw no. did, did you have I was a problem? Excited. I was excited. I, I you know I was a little I'm always a little disappointed. I feel like with movies like this, the less you say, the better. But I realize in this day and age in Hollywood, there's always this obsession with we got to make sure we get your money, and so if that means we have to spoil some stuff, we spoil some stuff. I mean, I look. I mean, I think even dating back to the previous trailer where we heard Patrick Stewart's voice, we knew this was the direction. Um, I just, I don't know that I needed to hear Baron Mordo say the word yeah. like ahead of the movie, but, yeah. and I think they, you know, they show you a quick shot of Captain Carter throwing her shield. Like, I don't know that I needed to see that like right now, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm all right with that. My, my one, my one prediction as I've thought more and more about this movie, I predict Elizabeth Olsen will be the real star of this film. I think she's going to upstage Benedict Cumberbatch. I feel like Marvel has been on this good run of strengthening their female character lineup. And they've been writing them really well with, you know, the Black Widow handoff and even Wanda's own arc in WandaVision. Um, I think the Kate Bishop angle and Hawkeye like I and obviously I think America Chavez has the opportunity to kind of join that lineup but I just have this feeling that like you're gonna if Elizabeth Olsen is allowed to kind of flex as both a hero and potentially the big bad of this movie if she's gonna break bad in this movie yeah I think that has the opportunity to be the most exciting character even relative to Strange Supreme and Doc Strange. That's just my feeling. My feeling is that, that that her performance is going to be the defining one. I don't know what you think about that. It's quite possible because um, she is perhaps the biggest threat in the MCU. Um, so 
they're definitely going to highlight her. She's going to be, I, I mean, it was in our conversation from last week um, that we didn't put out. Um, but she's going to have a lot of screen time. So that is a good possibility. And I, and I, and I can see that happening. Um, I'm going to have a prediction. Uh, I think we're going to probably see Killmonger again. Oh, they, show, okay. they show Captain Carter. All right, why not show him too? They show and they showing Doctor Strange the the, yeah. the 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 um what if character. So who knows, Brian, what we're gonna be seeing here, man. I, I think that's the biggest selling point right there. They're making a spectacle out of this and it and it's working. And it's working. Oh, uh, but let us know in the comment section what you think. Um Doctor Strange was doing the box office. Uh, who, what characters or cameos are going to be a, a, a part of this film? Um, what version of uh, Xavier uh, we're going to get? It or is this going to be the, I guess, the vehicle for the X Men? It seems like it. It could be. We don't know for sure, but having Professor X says a lot already. Brian, any last words? Um, I think, I think the biggest thing, like I said, I think the biggest thing for me is continuity, like continuity with Loki and some, and WandaVision and some of the things that the Disney plus shows established in terms of touching on the multiverse, touching on magic that are going to connect in this film. I think that's the thing I'm most interested to see because we, we've heard from Kevin Feige that. The Disney Plus universe informs the theater and a little bit vice versa, but we haven't really had a chance to test that a lot in the sense of, you know, Eternals, Shang-Chi. These were standalone projects, right? Now we have the film that in theory builds on some things you've seen on the small screen. I'm fascinated to see how tight that connectivity is. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, share it with your friends, short episode. And that's how we're going to try to keep it for now. I do want to get back to the long version at some point because, um, it's just easier and there's always a lot of stuff to talk about and, and we both have busy lives. So, um, but, uh, we'll see you next time on the nerd gen report.